A power sequencer is a piece of equipment that I think is often overlooked and could provide a lot of value. It could possibly protect your equipment. My audio system has a number of components in it and I needed to get an outlet strip to plug all of it into. So I got one of those rack mounted power distribution units. It's got eight outlets in the back. The one that I chose seems like it's built pretty well and it's got a nice LED voltmeter on it. I like that. And it also includes power sequencing. So when you turn the unit on, it doesn't just simply turn on all of the outlets in the back at one time. It turns them on in sequence. So it turns the first one on, waits a second or so, then turns the second one on, then the third one, and so forth in order. And then when I turn the master power switch on the unit off, it does the reverse where it turns off outlet number eight first, and then outlet number seven, and then six, and so forth. And so by plugging in the equipment into the appropriate outlets in the back, I can control the startup and shutdown sequence of the audio system when the one power switch on the box is toggled. That's really convenient. And this can be used in a lot of situations, not just simply audio, maybe in an industrial situation where you've got a machine with motors and cutting heads and such in it, but you don't want to turn that machine on until its control system is up and running. And so through the use of a sequencer, you could adjust the startup sequence so that when one switch is flipped, it first turns on the control system and then it turns on the machinery. And likewise, when the power is switched off, it shuts down the machinery, and then it shuts down the control system. This is commonly an issue in the world of audio. If you've worked with pro sound much, you've probably heard the expression amps on last and amps off first. And that's a simple piece of good advice because we don't want our power amplifiers or our powered speakers running while we turn on or off equipment in the audio system. Because some equipment, when you turn it on or turn it off, it can put out a hellacious spike through the outputs. And we don't want that transient to pass through the amplifier and get pushed out to the speakers and hear a horrendous pop or bang. And those transients could possibly damage the loudspeakers. And so it's important that we start up and shut down the audio system in the proper sequence. Now, if it's your audio system and you're mindful of this, it's not a big deal to know which order to turn all your equipment on. But if you have other people running your system, they might not be quite so mindful of it. And so I see a lot of audio systems that are in like bars and restaurants where the staff has to turn it on or off. And I think in those sorts of situations, a sequencer would make it a lot more convenient because they only have to hit one switch to turn the whole system on and it always gets turned on in the proper safe sequence. And likewise, when it comes time to turning things off, one switch and it all shuts off in proper sequence so that you don't get any clicks or pops or bangs coming through the system. The other thing that the sequencer does is it starts up one device at a time and this can help with the startup situation with equipment that draws a lot of power on startup. Uh, for example, your power amplifiers, when they are first started, the first thing they have to do is to fill up the internal power supply with energy. There's some big capacitors in there that have probably gotten depleted during its resting phase that need to be charged back up. So the first thing it's going to do is pull in a whole bunch of power to get the power supplies all charged up and ready to run. And so for that first fraction of a second on startup, your amplifiers or your powered speakers could draw a whole bunch of power, maybe more current than the wall circuit is rated to handle. But it's okay because it only happens for a fraction of a second. However, if you had say four or six powered speakers plugged into this or a few big power amps and you went to the master power switch on a standard power distribution box and hit that breaker well if each of those units is drawing a peak of 50 amps for just a moment as it starts up one unit probably not a problem your circuit can handle that 
but two or three, that's getting to be a really big power draw, and you just might blow a circuit breaker. More so, for that brief moment in time as the equipment is trying to start up, if you've got an amplifier that's trying to draw 30 amps of current off the line, that's going to drop the voltage down. And if you put two or three or more big power amplifiers or powered speakers on that circuit leg and you try to start them all at the same time, that's going to be a huge current draw and the voltage on the line is going to dip down during that startup phase. And you're going to find yourself trying to start up your amplifiers with 100 volts coming in. And that's not good for the equipment. If you have a power sequence, you're then it's going to start up each of those units one at a time with about a second delay between each one. So it will give your power circuit a little chance to recover before hitting it with the next load. And that way each piece of equipment has a full voltage applied to it when it tries to start up. Everything works out better. So there are some real advantages to using a power line sequencer. And you might be thinking that, well that sounds great, but that sounds like an expensive piece of equipment. And of course, there's a wide variety of power line distribution boxes from people like Furman and Art and others. And there's a pretty wide range of price of these things. And so some boxes that include sequencing features, yeah, they're kind of expensive. But others, not so much. And this unit that I chose was really inexpensive, well under $100. And it seems to work great. And when it comes to sequencer features, there aren't a whole lot of features. Some boxes include the ability to control the delay time from each switched outlet getting turned on or turned off. I don't think that's a huge feature. The box that I'm using has about a one second delay, so that seems to work out just fine for me. And by changing the order in which I plug in equipment, I can control how long it is from one piece of equipment starting up to the next one. So for example, I've got a DBX drive rack in my system. Now, the DBX drive rack is a loudspeaker processor that provides equalization limiting. It's an electronic crossover that splits out the high frequencies from the low frequencies. It does all of the speaker management features that you need. And I like DBX and this is a good unit, but one of the design oversights, in my opinion, is that the drive rack puts out a huge spike when it's turned on or turned off. And that unit's designed to be connected directly to a power amplifier, so I think DBX should have put some output muting in it. That would have been a better design, but it is what it is. And the drive rack takes a couple of seconds to come up and initialize and settle down. So I make sure to put that unit into outlet number one. So that's the first thing that gets powered up when I hit the master power switch on the sequencer. And then my audio amplifiers are attached to outlet number seven and eight. And so if it takes the unit about a second to transition from one outlet to the next, to the next, to the next, that means that I've got a good six to eight seconds of delay between when it powers up the drive rack and gets it initializing until it energizes the power amplifiers. And that's plenty of time to let the drive rack get up and running and stable before energizing the amplifiers. So I don't get any clicks or pops coming through the system. So if you're looking for a rack mount power distribution unit, I hope that you give some consideration to units that include power sequencing and think about whether or not that would be a helpful tool in your situation. Once again, if you're interested in the unit that I'm using, and so far I'm pretty happy with, I'll put a link down below so you can check that out. Thanks for tuning into the video. I hope to catch you soon on another one.